What's up everybody? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Jeep radio, just a regular bone stock Jeep radio. Uh, my old unit started doing weird uh, clicking noises and wouldn't let me play AM FM radio, that sort of thing. So I just got this uh, 2015 radio. I've already tested it. Everything seems to work fine so far. Um, and uh, this is a 2013 Jeep, just in case anybody's wondering, the 2015s do fit in the 2013 uh, Jeeps. Only thing I have noticed is there will be one plug in the back of it, I do believe uh, for the satellite antenna. Uh, I don't have satellite radio in this Jeep, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but that won't be able to be plugged in. It'll just be a regular uh, AM, FM uh, antenna there. When you get the new radio, uh, it is an anti-theft radio, you are gonna need a code from it in order to get that code. You're going to need the VIN number from the exact Jeep that the radio came out of. You're going to need that VIN number and you're going to need the code that's on the sticker on the top of the radio that you just got. Uh, I went through a little bit of trouble with this uh, yesterday. I just bought this radio yesterday and um, the guy had to go with the VIN number of the Jeep that he sold me the radio out of uh, to the local dealer and get the four digit code to turn off the anti-theft. I currently have the dash already taken apart a little bit uh, just as far as the old radio taken out i have everything else put back together so we'll just uh get going i'll show you how to take it apart and put the new radio in and we'll get it all back together and hopefully it all still works all right guys so here's the new radio uh the process is pretty simple and it only requires a couple of tools you're going to need a, uh, a ratchet i just have a small ratchet here uh with seven millimeter socket on it and then there's a flat top screwdriver needed there's actually no flat top screws there's only uh actually eight uh, seven millimeter bolts that you'll have to undo and uh, the flat top screwdriver is actually just to remove the vents and uh, just in case you need to pry on anything obviously you don't want to go too hard you might start breaking some plastics and whatnot but uh, let's get started so here we have uh, where I have the radio taken out you can actually see the uh, bolt holes just up in the corners uh, screw holes there that uh, that go up there I just have them down in my center console. So those are four of the eight. Uh, throughout this tutorial, uh, there's gonna be a lot of just taking out multiple screws, bolts, whatever you wanna call them. They're small bolts, so they're kinda like screws. Um, there's gonna be a lot of that. So uh, I'll show you where they are, how to get at them, that sort of thing, and then I'm just gonna kinda skip over it. Uh, you can take them out yourself, and then I'll just uh, start from the next item. Uh, so like I said, just feel free to pause it at any time so you can follow along a little bit better. The first thing that we're going to get started doing though is actually taking out these. Uh, as you can see, they kind of they just sit inside right here. And uh, when you start taking the dash apart, you're kind of going to want to lift it up. So these need to come out first so that you don't uh, accidentally break off the ends of these or mess anything up in there. So we'll start taking those off. The vents themselves need to be turned kind of at just a, a little bit of an angle to the right. There's a specific hole up here that uh, I think you can kind of see it there. And the flat top screwdriver will just actually go up into that hole uh, and you might need to wiggle the vent just a little bit you might need to turn it just a little bit to either side in order to properly line it up with the hole but uh, you can actually see uh, there's an area right here it's right there once you can push down on this clip with a screwdriver it'll uh, it'll release this one here is a little bit of a pain because I accidentally pushed up instead of pushing down with the screwdriver and I messed it up the first time. But uh, yeah, if you can get that pushed down and then it'll just be a little counterclockwise turn and then they'll come right out. So I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. I don't, not the most professional right here, right now, but uh, that's okay. Let's see, let's pull this down. There we go, get it turned. It should slide right out just like that. That one I thought would be a lot more of a pain than it actually was. So let's hope that we have the same luck with the rest of them. All right, so up on that, turn it, and right out. Very simple. Uh, like I said, as long as you don't end up putting the screwdriver up into it and, and pushing it from the bottom, uh, you'll be fine. And this one here, most people don't think they have to take this out because you kind of, by the looks of it, it looks like this should all come off in one you know, very nice piece. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the case. The uh, dash here is connected to the dash here and all the way around. Uh, it'll disconnect from about right here and then you'll have to lift kind of the whole top part off. You'll have the, the whole instrument cluster exposed. So without wasting too much time, let's get this piece taken out. Uh, let's see. Looks like I'll need to turn this one a little bit. There we 
go. And that pulls right out, just like that. Okay, the next part, pretty simple. I'll just have to remove some of the stuff from up here. And then there's a little insert there. You just have to take that out. It's pretty simple. That gets you at the first bolt that I was talking about. And the other section right here, that's why you took these out on either side. The uh, center section is just pushed in. So you'll just have to kind of grab on either side of that. Get the camera. Just in my hands there. Yeah, so you just get your hands on either side of that. And you just pop it out. It's just pushed in there. And then you can take that out. And that gives you the other bolt that you'll have to deal with. Uh, so that other bolt and then this bolt, there's two out of your four. And then your last two that you're going to have to deal with are going to be located. You got to get out of the Jeep or you don't have to, but if you're my size, you do. Uh, you have to get out and uh, this panel that's just below your steering column, you just grab in the sides of this, pull out, and then you grab the other side and then it folds down. It just kind of rotates along this uh, little hinge here. So that'll be the first part. Now, when you go to put it back in, you'll have to just stick it in through there and then rotate it up and then push the pins back in. They're, uh, they're pretty simple little pins, uh, but they're really nice because it's a lot harder to break these type off that just kind of use these uh, little arrowheads to push in through there. So that's uh, pretty nice to have. I wouldn't recommend doing it in too cold a weather because they are plastic. But the last two bolts that you have to remove are the uh, ones up here. So if you look at your steering column there by your ignition, it'll just be directly to the right and then go to the other side and your adjustment here for your steering column if you go back it'll just be to the left of that so you'll remove those two bolts and i'll get back to you as soon as i get those done all right so i already uh i took the liberty of taking all of these uh these bolts out here so we can just get started on the next part the first thing you're going to want to do uh next after you get all those out is uh just get your steering wheel down and out of the way uh, so you have a bit more room to kind of get this piece of the dash off and you're going to want to start working from a place where you can see the clip. So here you can actually see where the, the dash kind of clips on. Same type as the uh, as the ones underneath the steering column. Uh, and then you'll just kind of want to grab one of those and just start working at it a little bit until they, they all start coming out. And then once they start coming out, it should all come off pretty easily if you don't have anything stuck in there. And then the whole dash pad just lifts right off nice and easy from here. It's just a matter of plugging in your radio. Uh, I have four here. I'm only going to use three. Uh, one of these is for satellite radio. Uh, I think I need to leave the yellow one off if I remember correctly. But uh, I'm going to get that all plugged in. Uh, they're very simple. If you're removing the radio, just remember these clips on the back. You have to push in on this top piece in order to get it to let go. Otherwise, you're going to end up pulling the uh, plastic bit right off the end of the cable here. And you're going to have a really bad day. Uh, these other two are, are fairly simple. There's just a little piece here that you that you push in on, and uh, the other one is the exact same as that. Just you push in on this uh, this little piece right here, and then that should come right out. All right, so the new radio's in. It's looking a little dirty there. Uh, there's these two metal bits right here, and they uh, they are on the top and the bottom, and they kind of sandwich the radio in there. Uh, keeping it nice and snug. I don't have these bolted in yet. Pretty, uh, pretty simple. Like I said, it's just these, just these four black uh, small bolts here, and then they just go in through there, and uh, it'll be all good. I'm just going to test out this radio before I go and snug anything down because uh, I've already tested it once, but it has that security code thing, and uh, I don't want to get locked out of it again. So uh, I'm going to test it out, and then I'll put all four of these in, and then we'll put the dash pad back on and that's pretty much it so uh i'll be right back here's the radio all bolted down it's pretty uh pretty simple like i said it's just the four i shouldn't say pretty simple it's very simple uh you probably wouldn't have made it this far if you couldn't do that so uh we will grab the dash pad now and we'll just lay it back in place so once it's back kind of in place then It'll just be as simple as kind of just giving it the old push. And these should start clicking in. So there's one. And uh, this radio looks to be just a little bit smaller than the original one. Uh, that's fine. I'll get over that, I'm sure, within a couple of minutes. 
but yeah that's pretty much all it takes that is as secure as it ever can be it's not going to come off anytime soon by itself uh, it doesn't have as nice of a click as it did the first time though uh, which is kind of a shame because it really made it feel a lot more secure than it does now but anyways that's uh, the dash pad on now it's just a matter of getting everything put back in we got to get that bolt put back in we got to get that bolt put back in and then uh, we'll start dealing with the other stuff um so now that those two bolts are in actually we can put the other two that are in the one down here and the one down there in order to get this panel now back on uh, like i said earlier you just kind of slide those two bottom pieces in right here and then uh, and then just fold it up and then push in there's a pin there there's a pin there none of this stuff really has as much of a satisfying click anymore in this jeep because it's been taken apart a few times all right and there you go and there's that whole bottom panel now put back on and you can take your steering column and push it back up however you like it i usually have it pretty much at the top all right so the only thing left to do now is uh you can reinstall this rubber pad up here pretty easy just sits right in there and then you need to re reinstall your air vents so they actually uh doesn't matter which one goes where they're not really marked from what i understand and uh you can see where the these little pieces just go in through here you want to make sure that the, the jeep logo is kind of just to your left if you want them all facing up i'm a little bit nitpicky so i like to have them all facing up <laughs> so i'll just uh, push it in and then it'll just be a turn until they're facing up and then they should click in you shouldn't be able to turn them after that and then uh, yeah you can just do whatever you want with the vent and uh, it's the same for the rest of them push it in the jeep logo facing just a little bit to the left and then in like that uh, you could put this in before or after it's not really a big deal it just uh, just goes in and you should just be able to pop it right in if you have a jeep like mine uh, if you have one that has uh, any sort of switches or anything in the center uh, it's pretty well the same the only thing that you'll have to do is you'll have to make sure that it's plugged in prior to you uh, putting the centerpiece in uh, and in order to plug it in you'll have to put in the vents second uh, if you put in the vents too early obviously you won't be able to get at the, uh, the little plug uh, from what my understanding it doesn't pull far enough out to be able to pull it through here plug it in and then push it in uh, the centerpiece of your dash okay so the only last bit is the uh, the last little air vent here goes over on the left in order to install that same as before just over turn it and then all good so now the dash is all back together it's just a matter of uh, putting all your stuff back but uh, hopefully this helped you if it did leave a like uh, if it didn't uh, well, leave a like because uh, I need it all right thank you for watching and uh, have a good